So for this next exercise, we're going to incorporate some different planes of motion um, extending beyond just shoulder external rotation. So this one is called draw the sword. What you're going to do is you're going to hold that theraband by your hip and you're going to bring your arm up and across and out. Good, very nice. And down. Good. And similar to what we were talking about with the first exercise, you're thinking about not just moving your arm from your glenohumeral joint, but you're incorporating your entire scapula into this motion. So thinking about bringing that shoulder blade back first and then bringing the arm down. So from the back, um, I'm going to have Lexi initiate up and to the side. So go ahead, drawing the sword and up, good. So you can see her shoulder blade here working a little bit, but what I'm going to cue you for is if you come back down, one more time, you're thinking down and in. So from here, down and in, drawing that scapula down, initiating that movement of the entire arm from here. And as she comes back down, she's gonna hold, 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 and then release. So she's not gonna release early. So let me have you come back up. So what happens if she's in this position and she releases her shoulder blade early, but her arm is still up here, what happens is all these smaller rotator cuff and external rotator muscles are now holding her entire arm instead of having the assistance of all the other scapular stabilizing musculature. And back down, holding, 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 and slowly release. And let's go one more time. Shoulder blade coming down, good, and then Maintain, maintain, and then release. Good. So another variation that we can do um, also in the different planes of motion is going to be, instead of draw the sword, we are now going to put on the seatbelt. Yes. So Lexi's going to have the TheraBand up here. She's gonna take her left arm and she's gonna rotate, oh, not rotate, bring her arm down. Good, and back up. One of the things that we also want to do here is we want to maintain a neutral wrist. So instead of breaking at the wrist this way, you want to make sure that that is straight. All right, and come back up. So similar to what we were talking about with the draw the sword exercise, you want to initiate with your shoulder blade first, then bring down your arm, holding your shoulder blade in place, bringing up the arm, letting your shoulder blade follow. One more time for me. So here, bringing the shoulder blade down first, then, yeah, there you go. And then keeping it there, and then letting it follow. So one of the things you might find, which is something we talked about earlier, is if you find yourself really trying to use your wrist to pull this way, think about whether or not you're using the muscles up in your shoulder blade to help negotiate the demand. So. If I can use the larger muscles up in the shoulder blade, I can rely less and have less tension in my forearm as well. All right, let's take a look from the back. So once again, you want to think about initiating from that shoulder blade, together and down, then bringing the arm down. Good, very nice, keeping it there. Now as she brings her arm back up, then your arm follows. So you're following a very sequential, very sequential pattern, shoulder blade, then let that arm follow, let the arm come up. And, and all this time, you're maintaining this side too. So you're actually getting a double whammy. There you go, very nice, back up. Compensation that we will sometimes see is if we are not using these guys, we tend to grip through the top and that's gonna be your upper trap. A lot of that is going to lead up to some tension up at the neck since that's where it attaches. So sometimes if you're having neck discomfort, a lot of times we'll find some weakness in the interscapular muscles. And so we like to address those things to avoid compensations.